National Bowling are back in the biggest little city in the world. to Reno, Nevada for CBS Sports next stop on the Pro Bowlers Tour. We're live for the 1999 National Bowling Stadium Open. Hello and happy Father's Day everyone. I'm Gary Seibel along with PBA Hall of Famer Marshall Holman. Well you know we're nearing the end of the PBA Spring Summer Tour and Marshall we went the first six weeks of the season without a number one seed being able to win. But over the last couple of weeks two of the biggest names in bowling have tasted victory from the top spot. Well right you are Gary and two weeks ago it was Parker Bowen the third at the Showboat Invitational in Las Vegas. Now he led a couple tournaments earlier in the spring. This time he leads it and he takes care of business winning from the number one seed. And then in Tucson Arizona Walter Ray Williams after quite a drought not making our telecast not only does he get there he gets there as the number one seed and he wins title number 30. So one of today's big questions can this week's number one seed make it three in a row on the tour. Well Ricky Ward the number one seed certainly is going to try now he led this tournament far very from the early rounds of match play and he never looked back and Ward is a consummate shot maker who thrives on pressure situations and Ward will take on the winner of our shootout consisting of number two seeded Tim Chris who's dominated on the tour in the last couple years using his slow ball speed and solid release. Our third seed is Mike Miller a self made power cranker who continues to be the only bowler successfully bowling on tour using the thumbless delivery. And our fourth seed is Danny Wiseman, a man with a silky smooth approach and the determination of a proven champion. Well, we are in Reno, Nevada, and there's big money on the line all the time in this city. The champion today of the National Bowling Stadium Open will receive a cool $24,000. And we are ready for the shootout round. And Danny Wiseman, the fourth seed, will be up first. 31 years old, 12 years as a pro, native of Baltimore, Maryland. One of three right-handers in our championship round today. And Wiseman starts things out on the right foot with a strike in the first frame. A confident opening shot for Danny Wiseman. Wiseman followed now by Tim Chris. As you see, the second seed, 16 years, a pro. Coming in light, but getting the friendly roll of the two pin. Able to get the head pin off the sideboard, coming back, just knocking out the two pin. Very fortunate. Shot a little light in the pocket. He'll go harder and straight at the 10 pin, and no problem. Tim Chris converts the spare in his first attempt in the shootout round. And that will now bring Mike Miller onto the approach. Mike from Albuquerque, New Mexico. And the third right-hander in our shootout round. All three of the bowlers in the shootout round. Bowling from the right side. Mike, 6'1", 200 pounds. 38-year-old. And a great start for Miller as well. So a couple of strikes by Wiseman and Miller in the first. Chris opens with a spare. And here is Danny Wiseman now for the second frame. Wiseman had laser surgery last fall and that has really helped his game has not had to wear glasses or contacts and I don't know if that had anything to do with it Marshall but Wiseman opens with the front two. And Danny Wiseman has changed to go a little more toward the inside of the lane. He was playing in practice from very very far out on the very right side of the lane down by the channel. He's moved his line in a little bit. As Tim Chris gets ready to throw his second shot. And Chris in the second frame gets on track. Come on, Mike. Mike Miller, who revolution who revolutionized the thumbless shot in the PBA. Tell us about that, Marshall. Well, as you can see, he just, he palms the ball, and it's, it's really amazing. It takes a lot of strength and a lot of very, very good timing, but it enables him to throw a powerful delivery, as you can see right there. 
So Miller opens with a couple, and we'll take a look at that thumb again. Once again, he palms the ball, takes a lot of very, very good strength, and, and he practiced it for many, many, many months before trying it on tour. Used to throw the ball very straight. Now he's a power player. Now Wiseman up in the third. And Wiseman remaining perfect through the first three frames of the shootout round. Tim Chris now finds himself down early by 10 pins. And Tim Chris comes back with his second strike. So Chris with a spare and a couple of strikes through the first three frames. The ball of Tim Chris, solid in the pocket. All the pins taking care of each other. Confident shot, first double for Chris. Other two players are perfect. Mike Miller does have a win on the tour this year, earlier. title came in the Don Carter PBA Classic and also Mike Miller opens up he is perfect we've got a tight one Danny Wiseman and Mike Miller are tied through three frames of the shootout round we'll be back CBS Sports Spectacular presents the National Bowling Stadium Open sponsored by the Reno National Bowling Stadium let the good times roll AC Delco Automotive Parts if you're not asking for it you're asking for it and by Tanakta for tough cases of athlete's foot. Danny Wiseman and Mike Miller presently tied for the early lead. Now for the Friday night recap where the position round determined who made today's TV finals. And it was Ricky Ward who really just took care of the field in the final game, shooting a 290 to secure the number one spot. And Danny Wiseman, he needed two strikes in the 10th frame and some bell. He took care of business. The confident Danny Wiseman. And in fact, Marshall Wiseman's second ball strike in the 10th frame took care of Mark Williams, who dropped out of the championship round. Tim Chris won four of his last six matches to qualify as the second seed. And that's this week's Friday Night Recap. And we'll take a look at the tournament stat pack. And you'll take a seed to hear that the average to cash and the average to make match play very, very close, only one pin different. Philip Keene III is president and CEO of the Reno Sparks Convention and Visitors Authority, and his organization has helped make this event a most enjoyable one for everybody while we stayed here this week at the National Bowling Stadium and in the area. Great job. Through three rounds of the shootout. And Mike Miller and Danny Wiseman tied. Tim Chris down by 10. Wiseman will start things out in the fourth frame. Infant and the reaction of a thankful Tim Chris. Well, Chris with a lucky one in a town that you want to be lucky in. Mike Miller now in the fourth frame. He also perfect through three, make it four. Wiseman and Miller, nothing but strikes. Danny Wiseman, his TV record phenomenal. The highest winning percentage best amongst the active touring pros at 673. And every shot he's thrown has been flush in the pocket. Can he do it again? Danny Wiseman yeah, feeling baby. it. Danny Wiseman getting it done. So Wiseman with five to open up the shootout round, keeping the pressure on the other two players, Tim Chris and Mike Miller. Tim Chris now up in the fifth frame. Next year, his friends and family will be able to wish him a happy Father's Day. His wife, Sherry, just found out recently that she will have their first child. And Tim leads the 10. A soft 10 for Tim Chris. The ball coming in just a tad late into the pocket. Wasn't able to get the six pin to come out of the channel to knock down the 10. Well, don't forget, you can access all the latest information on the PBA by checking out the PBA's website at www.pbatour.com. The site, sponsored by Brunswick, features the latest news, tournament standing stats, and scheduled live chats with the pros. And an easy conversion for Tim Chris. So he will remain down to both Mike Miller and Danny Wiseman through five frames. <laughs> oh, 
Miller with four strikes in a row finds himself 10 pins down to Danny Wiseman, but with a strike here, he can even things up with the front five. Oh, did you see that? What a break and a little dancing music for Mike Miller. Miller playing to the crowd, he loved that shot. No, he knew he also got a little bit lucky as well, getting everybody worked up here. Well, he leaves a solid 10, but what comes back off the wall? I'm not even sure what it was. I'm sure Miller doesn't care. He's just happy to have it. And when he gets happy, he gets dancing. <laughs> he gets very happy. Now maybe feeling a little bit embarrassed. It looks like his face is turning the same color as his shirt. Wiseman and Miller are even up. Tim Chris, 21 pins down. And Wiseman had to delay his approach as the uh, crowd was going a little bit crazy for, for Miller. See if he can regain his composure on the right-hand lane. That'd be a yes, affirmative, six strikes in a row. Danny Wiseman in a groove. Ah. And here's Chris working on a spare, obviously with our other two bowlers showing nothing but strikes. Chris has to begin to do the same. <laughs> and the 10 for Tim Chris. And the same shot that he left last time with the ball just coming in a little bit light in the pocket, not able to get the six pin out of the channel to knock down the 10 as the other two players watch and contemplate what might be for their next shots. So Tim Chris converts yet another spare. Coming up next, rivals Jimmy Connors and John McEnroe do battle in the finals of the Quality Challenge right here on CBS Sports. Mike Miller needs to answer Danny Wiseman. Tim Chris down by 32 pins. Mike Miller presently down by 10 to Wiseman. But if he gets this, and he does, we're evened up once again. And these players aren't just striking, Gary. They're striking with great shots, high flush pocket shots. So through six frames, Mike Miller, Danny Wiseman are dead even. Tim Chris will have his work cut out for him as we move through the shootout round. Where Parker Bone the third bowled one of only 13 televised perfect games in PBA history. The first, well, back in 1967 at the Tournament of Champions in Akron, Ohio, Jack Biondolillo rang up 12 straight strikes in the first match of the championship round. And talking about the first match of the championship round, we have a couple of possibilities as well here. Marshall, Danny Wiseman, Mike Miller, six strikes in a row for each. Well, they both have the opportunity to, to shoot 300, but. You know, and it's $10,000 for a 300 game in the shootout round, but they're not thinking that. They're trying to win this match. Right now, it's all tied. So make it seven now for Danny Wiseman in the shootout round. He is hot. The good projection for Danny Wiseman. You think he wants his seventh strike? He says yes. <laughs> And now Tim Chris in the seventh, down by 32. And Chris is bowling a very, very good game as he sticks up his hand and says, that's one for me. But he's getting run over by Wiseman and Miller, who have yet to miss. And right behind Tim Chris, a shot of wife Sherry there briefly. Again, they found out just recently they'll be having their first child. confident strike from Mike Miller as he acknowledges the crowd. Someone right in the middle of his approach said two fingers baby. That's all it takes for Miller. Well you know if a 300 game is bowled during the shootout and two guys with that possibility right now the bowler will receive a $10,000 bonus from the PBA. Front seven for Wiseman. Left off his hand. Will it hold? It does. Danny Wiseman 
been putting on a show today, and Mike Miller knows that he has to stay right with him. Uh, and Wiseman was very fortunate. The ball was left off his hand. You can see the reaction. Beautiful form from Wiseman. Reaches out way out in the lane. Fortunately, the ball held the pocket, able to strike. Tim Chris now in the eighth. And with that strike, Tim Chris still has a possible 258 game. So there's a there's a slim chance that Chris is still involved in this match. Strike fever catching on here. Tim Chris now has put together a couple. Mike Miller in the eighth frame. It shows him down 10, but of course, if he makes this strike, he's dead even once again with Danny Wiseman. Well, it's got to be a lot of pressure having to be the one coming back and answering Wiseman every time. Can he do it again? He does it. Come on now. Mike Miller now, also perfect through eight frames. And Marshall, there was some question, the fact that the tournament proper was held the normal days, Thursday and match play ending on Friday night, that with a day off on Saturday, this being a Sunday tournament, these guys may come out a little bit cold. That is not the case. Yeah, you, you think Wiseman and Miller lost any momentum? I don't think so. For nine. Came in light. Right Thank off you. his hand. He had the two, the four, the five, and the eight. Fortunately, as we're going to see right here, the bucket is standing. Two, four, five, eight. There goes the four pin into the five, into the two, into the three. He's got nothing but the eight left. It's fortunate just to have one pin, but there's the opening that Miller needed. Wiseman now for the conversion of the spare in the ninth frame. He'll pick that up. Solid eight. God. Well, for in-depth Donics. sports coverage with late-breaking news, Jeez. live scores, exclusive columns, and more, go to cbs.sportsline.com or on America Online, enter keywords CBS Sportsline. Tim Chris working on a pair of strikes. For any chance, he has to have it. He's got a hook. And he comes in light and leaves the two and the eight. Yeah. Maybe just a little too much speed for Chris. That That's bad. the way he gets his ball to hook back up in the pocket. Doesn't, doesn't do it with power. He does it with his fingers and the slow speed as Mike Miller sitting, contemplating his next shot, knowing that he's one pin up right now, one pin up to that man, Danny Wiseman. Chris converts the spare, the 2-8 spare. Mike Miller, the only bowler of the three in the shootout round with an opportunity to pick up well, some extra pocket change. Marshall, $10,000 from the PBA. He needs four more strikes to do so. Well, with a strike here, it would put him up by 11 pins, and it would also give him the hammer going into the ninth, going into the 10th frame. Still, the game he wants to win. He's not thinking 300. He's thinking beating Danny Wiseman. It's a solid strike on lane 25. Mike Miller. Nine consecutive strikes. And obviously looking to move on to the championship round. And Wiseman, if he strikes out, it would force Miller to get the first strike of the 10th. So very important to strike here on the right-hand lane. He comes in light again, but he splashes the pins around. Wow. And I think what's, what could be happening is the, the, the lane oil has a tendency to carry down as the game progresses. Now this ball comes in light, very fortunate. He just sort of tickles him over. You'll see the reaction of a very pleased, thank you, Danny Wiseman. Wiseman may not be able to control his own destiny, but he can certainly put the pressure on Mike Miller. Slower speed left off his hand. Not only doesn't he strike, he leaves the four, the six, the seven, and the ten. And now for Danny Wiseman, he could fit, pick Should've two of these up. In, dumbass. Shoot, pick up two of these pins and shoot 267. Mike Miller in pretty good position. Careful. Wiseman sticks at the line. Nice. Only gets one, shoots 266. A fine effort from Danny Wiseman in the shootout round. Here's Tim Chris in the trap. Come on. Leaves a rocking 10. <laughs> and for Chris, it'll be no better than 225. And really, bowled a good game. Wiseman has got to be very disappointed with his second shot in the 10th frame. And it really gives Miller 
a much easier road to the to the championship game. Tim Chris finishing out his shootout round in the 1999 National Bowling Stadium Open. One more shot for Chris. Yeah, that's, that's solid nine. Tim Chris pulled a very, very good game, Gary, but boy, he just oh couldn't get the carry. Yeah. 224 for Tim Chris. <laughs> well, here's the situation. Mike Miller, front nine. Feet of a strike on this on this frame right here. The first ball of tenth. He's going to win the shootout round. And then he can start thinking about shooting 300. One more good shot. That's all he wants. And that wasn't just a good shot, Gary. That was a great shot. The best shot he's thrown the entire game. Having one day oh, off no. certainly did not affect Mike Miller. High flush in the pocket. And Mike Miller, what's he thinking about now? He's thinking about 10,000 reasons why 300 would be a good thing to do. Two more strikes. He's got it. Taking a little extra time. Just needs to maintain his form. Every shot, high flush in the pocket. Will it fall? It does. A very light right hit. Takes care of the 10th pin. Will Mike Miller be the 14th player to shoot 300 on national television? Well, Marshall, the 13th was right here in this house last year. Watch that 10th pin. What a late kick of the 10 off the 6. Right now, he's not sure. Just does knock it down. Last year in the Masters, here at the National Bowling Stadium, in the shootout round, Parker Bowl in the third, rolled a 300 game. Will we have our second consecutive 300 in two years here in Reno? It's a 300 game. And you know the pressure was on Miller here. He already had the shootout round wrapped up. And that ball right through the pins gives Mike Miller the 14th televised perfect game. Right now, we're going to go down to Marshall, who's standing by with Mike Miller. Marshall? Thank you very much, Gary. Mike, 300 game, you, you were so composed. I mean, how do you feel? Well, you know, obviously I'm very excited to do something like that. There's, there's been so few people to have a chance, even have a chance to do that. So I just want to say hi to my daughter and my son and my wife and uh, happy Father's Day. And, and it's just been, it's awesome so far. But I got another game to bowl, so I need to check it out and chill out. Well, you that's the, that's the right thing to do. Relax yourself. Get ready for the next game. One more game for Mike Miller. Chance to win this tournament. Already history made with a 300 game. Gary? All right, Marshall. Talk about a happy Father's Day and a happy father right there. CBS Sports coverage of the 1999 National Bowling Stadium Open will continue after this message and a word from your local station. Mike Miller, 300, wins the shootout round of the National Bowling Stadium Open, earns the right to take on top seed Ricky Ward. That championship match is coming up shortly. Well, you know, in addition to today's four finalists, 20 other bowlers made match play this week. Finishing eighth was Ryan Schaefer, who missed an opportunity to advance to the title match in the Tucson Open last week. This week, he fell out of the top four late in match play Friday night. 
Right behind at number nine, Bob Lern Jr. He had a real shot to make today's championship round going into the position round game on Friday night, but couldn't hang on. Five-time PBA Player of the Year, Walter Ray Williams Jr. checked in at number 13. He won his 30th title last week, the Tucson Open. At number 17, Sean Quinn, who made his first PBA Championship round appearance in the Oregon Open at the end of May, finishing fourth in that one. And at number 21, Paul Fleming, the leading money-winning rookie on the tour this year by virtue of his second place finish with partner Dale Eagle right here in Reno in the National Senior Doubles earlier this year. Well, you know, the word cosmic doesn't refer just to the heavens anymore. In the world of recreational bowling, it has taken on a whole new meaning. With more, here's Marshall Holman with our tip of the week. We've seen a variety of changes on the PBA Tour in recent years. From the updated format and new arena setup to the all-new Gold Pro pins. But the professional tour isn't the only thing to see change in the world of bowling. The recreational side has realized modernization as well. Welcome to the world of cosmic bowling. Conceptually, the game is the same. There are still 10 pins at the end of the lane and you're still trying to bowl 300. The environment, however, is dramatically different. You'll be bowling in a club-like setting with music and pins that glow in the dark, ranging in color from lime green to hot pink, while you might even have a disco ball spinning from above. It's the same game with a whole new spin. While the competitive tour is here to stay, recreational bowling continues to prosper. As a matter of fact, bowling is the number one participatory sport in America, with over 55 million people bowling per year. The bottom line, whether you're a cosmic bowler or still appreciate the more traditional game, there's an option for you. Well, a couple of options for our two remaining bowlers today, with victory being the far more attractive of the two. The championship match of the National Bowling Stadium Open between Mike Miller and top seed Ricky Ward is coming up next. for a nice horseback ride. Well, we're getting ready for the championship match of the National Bowling Stadium Open. Mike Miller, winner of the shootout round, taking on top seed Ricky Ward. Marshall, one of our two bowlers today, will automatically qualify for the match play portion of our season-ending AC Delco All-Star Classic next week. Well, you're right, and the players that have already qualified, a couple that come to note, Parker Bone the third, certainly the hottest player on the spring tour. Doug Kent also, I like his style and his intensity. intensity. I look for him to do well at the AC Delco All-Star Classic. And a couple other players to look for, the Rookie of the Year, and now one of the candidates for Player of the Year, Chris Barnes, and of course, 30-time PBA champion, Walter A. Williams Jr. Now, one of these two gentlemen, Ricky Ward or Mike Miller, oh, wow. they've got an opportunity as well. The winner, they'll go into match play, and you know, after shooting 300, I would generally pick the other man because of the letdown, but... I don't think it's going to happen this time. Mike Miller showed a lot of moxie by being very calm and cool during that interview. He also did something interesting. He threw a couple of shots at spares on the alternate lane in case he happens to leave one. But with shots like that, you wouldn't expect it. Mike Miller has thrown nothing but strikes today. And Ricky Ward, who is the top seed, had a great week, very consistent, was in first place, leading all bowlers for most of the week. And, and Ward starts out with a strike. He, the left-hander in today's tournament, and the only left-hander, Ricky from North Fort Myers, Florida, 30 years old. And a look at what he's done on the spring-summer tour, his best effort being in third in the Masters in Syracuse last month. Now you see the DQ in the Empire State Open. He actually used the ball that he had not weighed in. When he did weigh it in, it weighed in illegal, and he was disqualified. It's something that Ward brought up on his own. He wasn't trying to pull up something funny. He just forgot to weigh the ball, and he starts out with two strikes in a row and puts some pressure right back on Mike Miller. And Ricky Ward, a couple of strikes to open up. 10-pin lead early, but if Miller strikes, that will even it out once again. Marshall touched on it a little bit. Any letdown for Mike Miller after bowling a 300 game? Well, it doesn't look like it. Not after the first frame. Will he strike in the second? Not only is he striking, look at how solid those shots are. It's just, I'm, I'm absolutely dumbfounded. Not since I watched Bob Benoit many years ago at the Quaker State Open in Grand Prairie, Texas, has I ever seen anybody so solid with their strikes going flush. Look at the way he cups that wrist 
and follows through directly toward the, the, the target, the great knee bend, and right now, the confidence of Mike Miller. And once again, Miller does not use a thumb hole. Pulls with his thumb out, as you can see, which to me and you know, probably a lot of other people makes it even that much more amazing. Well, trying for his 15th strike in a row, and the seventh pin does not respond. 14 strikes in a row for Mike Miller. The string ends, watches the pins, just avoid the seven pin. You know, so often when the ball comes in half pocket like that, Gary, we're watching the 10 pin to see if the six will knock it out. But with reactive resin balls, you see a lot of those half pocket ten, seven pins left. Hard and straight, his first try with a spare, and look at that. Throws the ball in the channel. I alluded to it earlier, he practiced some spares during the commercial break. Ball fell off his hand, and just drops it off his hand left, Does, wants to go hard and straight, just falls into the channel at the very last minute, and there's a lot of disappointment. Well, this year the pros have converted to 227 of 235 single pins, left in 78 games for an average of over 96%, but uh, that did not fall in the 96 percentile. Otherwise, Mike Miller has been perfect. Oh, baby, what time. And the break for Ricky Ward as he comes is a little bit high and trips out the six pin. This ball coming in high. Pin goes to the sideboard, knocks out the six, and knocks out the ten. He knows it's gonna be high. Oh, oh. baby, what time. And Ricky Ward now up by 23 over Mike Miller through the first three frames of our championship match. Now comes in high again. This time there is no friendly break. This is a spare that can be made, a split that can be made. The six, the seven, and the ten. Needs to get the ball right of the six pin, slide it into the seven. Difficult, but it can be made. And he takes the count. Well, coming up next week, we're going to close out the spring summer tour for the PBA here on CBS. It's the AC Delco All Star Classic. We're going to start at 2.30 Eastern Time next Saturday, and we've got a 90 minute program for you, so don't miss it. It's coming up next Saturday at 2.30 Eastern. But Gary, Mike Miller was down by 23 pins before that split. Now just eight. He's got to feel like today is his day. But maybe after a shot like that where he threw the ball slowly, right through the heart. Three, four, six, seven, ten. Well, up to today, there had been 52 splits so far this year. Can make this, get it to this side of the three pin, roll it over into the four and the seven. And of those 52, Marshall, only four had been converted, only about 7% of the spares. And that will not increase the percentage either. So a couple of off frames for both Ricky Ward and Mike Miller. Almost a case of I don't want it, you can have it so far in the first four frames of the championship match. Ward with a 20 pin lead over Miller. Miller needs to get that speed back up. Threw the ball so slowly the last frame tried to fit it in instead of stroking the ball down the lane. Better projection, better speed, better result. Now Mike Miller in the fifth has picked up a strike. Miller knew what he did wrong the last couple of frames. This ball, he gets further down the lane, better speed, keeps the ball light in the pocket, able to take care of the pins in the fifth frame. Now Ward, who is, was on an open, comes back with a strike, so he has struck in four of the first five frames. Ricky Ward, PBA Rookie of the Year in 1991. Mike Miller now, as you look at the scoreboard, down by 20 to Ricky Ward. With a strike here, Ward will increase that to 30. This is the lane he came in high on. At this time, better projection down the lane. 
So Ricky Ward picks up a strike trying to keep this match close in the National Bowling Stadium open. We'll be back in just a moment. Upseed has a 30 pin lead over Mike Miller who bowled a 300 game in the shootout round. Should Ricky Ward the top seed win over Mike Miller today that'll make the third consecutive number one seed to win on the spring summer tour. Miller now up in the sixth working on a strike after a couple of open frames. Ball drove right through the pocket in front of the nine pin. What a great shot and what a terrible break as the ball just goes right through the pocket. Just the strength of his release coupled with the reactive resin balls. No respect for these three pound 10 ounce Brunswick Pro pins. Using the same ball to shoot the spare. Usually you just go hard and straight on spares. Maybe that seven pin that he missed in the first frame weighing on his mind. Decided not to use the spare ball. Let's go. Miller converts this time, but still finds himself down 30. All the confidence that Mike Miller had coming off the 300 game. It's been deflated quite a bit, and a lot of the reason is from that man right there, Ricky Ward, who didn't pay attention to what Miller did previously, just taking care of his own business. And now Miller leaving the 10 pin and not near as fortunate Marshall as he was in the shootout round. Well, very a good point. He did leave that 10 pin here in the championship match in the shootout. Same kind of ringing 10 pin shot, but a pin came off the sideboard and knocked it out. He's going back to the spare ball hard and straight. Can he control it off his hand? So a conversion for Mike Miller. Well, don't forget, tonight on 60 Minutes, how did two guys con banks out of $350 million? Well, it was so easy, you have to wonder why everybody doesn't do it. 60 Minutes tonight, followed by Touched by an Angel. Then the CBS Sunday movie, The Love Letter, starring Jennifer Jason Lee, Campbell Scott, and Estelle Parsons. That's all tonight on CBS. <laughs> and a solid eight pin for Ricky Ward. Same shot, the same thing that just happened to Mike Miller on the right side of the lane happens to Ricky Ward as you watch the good form. High backswing, solid at the line. But take a look at the pins. He goes right through, right through the pocket, leaves the eight pin. It gives Mike Miller a little bit of life late into the game. So now we are through seven frames of the championship match. And Miller is still down 30 to Ricky Ward. Marshall, Ward didn't bowl last week, and he said that he felt a whole lot fresher and refreshing this week. He came out and bowled very well the entire week. Well, he did. He really he took over the lead early in the early in the rounds. And uh, you know, I I know when I bowled on tour, I like to bowl two or three tournaments, then take a week off just to get it out of my mind. As Ward's up on the left hand lane. Yes, right there, one time. There's the solid strike for Ricky Ward. The seven pin response at the very last minute. Ricky Ward, yet to win in 1999. He has a third and a fourth place finish so far this year. Third in the Masters, fourth earlier in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Mike Miller still well in this match. He's down by 30 pins, has the opportunity to strike in the ninth frame if he strikes it all the way out. He can shoot 214. Ricky Ward right now working at a 214 pace. Look at the intensity in the eyes of Mike Miller. He watches the 10 pin knocked out. While Ward looks for his first championship of the year, Mike Miller going for his second, won the Don Porter Classic earlier, but still has his work cut out here and still down by 30. And with really, with, with any realistic chance, he needs to strike here in the ninth frame. If he doesn't, he'll need lots of help from Ricky Ward. Here yeah. comes the messenger. Yeah! Here comes a head pin messenger shot right back into that 10 pin and the reaction of a man who knows he's still got a chance to win. And possibly even a tie. 
And in fact, the possibility of a tie does exist. You can see Ricky Ward, except for the first round of qualifying where he was 37th after that round, he has been up close and in the lead most of the rest of the way. A pressure player taking care of it in the ninth frame for Ricky Ward right now. It's very simple. Any kind of a mark, he's your champion. Ward with only one open frame. Mike Miller with a couple in this championship match, and that has been his downfall. A mark for Ward, and he will be our National Bowling Stadium Open champion. I said it in the opening. He's a great pressure player. I see him getting this one. What a great hey. shot. There's your champion. You. That will do it, Ricky Ward. Picks up his first title of the year, and it comes here in Reno, Nevada. We've seen a little bit of everything today, Marshall. Our first championship in 99 for Ricky Ward, a 300 game for his title match challenger, Mike Miller, in the shootout round. Well, I know I've been excited today. I, I, I love to watch the guys bowl great, showcase their abilities. Ricky Ward coming through with the pressure. Mike Miller able to take care of it last game with the 300. Great tournament here in Reno. And that's it, Ricky Ward can take a deep breath. It's a sigh of relief for him. He just has to finish it out. Anybody hungry for a bucket? Leaves the bucket, as he says, but it's still a 240 for Ricky Ward. So Ricky Ward, the winner of the 1999 National Bowling Stadium Open. Back in a moment. Reno. by the Reno National Bowling Stadium. Let the good times roll. Roundup. Roundup kills weeds down to the root. And by Brunswick, www.brunswickbowling.com. Welcome back, where National Bowling Stadium Open champion Ricky Ward takes it with a 240 over Mike Miller and 193, the third consecutive number one seed to win a tournament on the Spring Summer Tour. Right now, down to Marshall Holman. Thank you, very, thank you very much, Gary. I'm here with Jeff Griffin, the mayor of, of uh, Reno, with a check and trophy presentation. Thanks, Marshall. Ricky, a great tournament uh, on behalf of the city of Reno and the National Bowling Stadium. I'd like to present this trophy, but more importantly, this check for $24,000. Congratulations. All right, thank you very much, Mayor. Ricky, Ricky, you, you were not intimidated by the 300 bowl by Mike Miller. You just came out hot. What was your plan? Well, I've, I've seen it happen both ways where uh, the 300 just you know, following that's tough, and I was just hoping it was my turn to uh, make the good shots and uh, take advantage of it. Well, Ricky, your first win of 1999, and you know, you just you seem so cool under pressure. I know I've talked to you about this before. Do you, do you are you as calm inside as you look outside? Oh, I'm nervous. As, I'm <laughs> I'm nervous. I just try not to show it. You didn't look very nervous. Okay, Gary, he's our champion now. Back up to you. In fact, he is our champion, Ricky Ward, winner of the 1999 National Bowling Stadium Open. So for Marshall Holman, I'm Gary Seibel saying so long from Reno, Nevada, where Ricky Ward has won the 1999 National Bowling Stadium Open. CBS Sports coverage of the Pro Bowlers Tour continues next Saturday at 2.30 Eastern for the AC Delco All-Star Classic. Coming up next, it's the final of the Quality Challenge as Jimmy Connors faces John McEnroe.